God. Well, a couple of weeks ago, I preached a message entitled Breaking News, and I want to continue that today with the part two of this message. Two weeks ago, this message called Breaking News, we looked at the next event scheduled on God's calendar, the rapture of the church. How many of you are ready for the rapture of the church? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I saw someone put, they say, we need such a revival that will make the devil start praying for the rapture. I said, glory to God for that. Well, there is breaking news that is coming that you don't want to be around to hear. That will be the breaking news that millions have vanished. Millions are missing. Aliens have attacked. Whatever the news may say, we talked about being ready for His coming two weeks ago. I preached a message on holiness, about living right, living holy, living godly, preaching that you don't hear a lot of in these last days. But a dozen or so people responded to Jesus in the altar call. I'm telling telling you holiness preaching still works it still draws people to Calvary it still draws people to Jesus because the thing is like I said a moment ago we are separated from God because of his holiness but only the blood of Jesus can bring us back into relationship with him the next event on God's calendar the rapture of the church and the sad thing is is that the majority of Americans the majority of people the majority Majority of our families, I'll even say today for many of us, will miss the rapture and will hear the breaking news that we talked about a couple weeks ago. They will wake up with you gone, mama. They will wake up, dad, and you will be in heaven. And all they will be seeing on the news is that people have vanished. And I'm sure if you raised them in church and they knew about the rapture, they'll immediately know what happened. And I pray to God they'll open up the Bible and they'll find the Lord Jesus Christ and live for Him and through the tribulation period. Is anybody in this place today? But I'm going to tell you, many, many people are going to miss the rapture. Matter of fact, if it took place this morning, it's quite possible that some of you listening to me today preaching this message could possibly miss the rapture. You're not ready for it. You're not living right. Many of our families will be in that state. And if you're not ready when the rapture occurs, Occurs, you are going to go through a period on this earth. It will be a seven year period called the tribulation. Two weeks ago, we talked about the rapture. Today, we'll talk about the tribulation. I've heard many people say, well, why do we need preaching in church about the tribulation? Why do we need to teach on the book of Revelation if we're all going to be gone? Well, the sad fact is many people aren't going to be gone. Many people will miss the rapture and they need to hear. I remember as a kid and as a teenager hearing preachers preach on the tribulation. One thing that I do as a preacher when I preach on a on a current topic is I will Google what other quote unquote famous preachers are saying about that topic and I have found time and time again that little is being said when I address the transgender issue I googled I searched I researched I could find very little stuff I'm telling you if you google sermon on prosperity you will find enough research to do as many series as you want to do on prosperity you google things like the tribulation you'll find out quick that many of the people that we listen to on TV and we send our money to they ain't talking about the rapture they ain't talking about the tribulation I had to go back to when I was a boy and when I was a kid and I'll tell you what I found some fiery Holy Ghost sermons on the subject thankfully found some where they said preach this stuff use my material it's not mine it was from God anyhow I'm telling you friend God is about to send Jesus Christ back and the news that I'm going to preach this morning will be worth gold to the ears of people who are left behind after that trumpet sounds can you say praise God God today. So what do you do if you miss it is what I want to talk about today. What to do if you miss it. Again, if you're not ready, if you're not saved, born again, right with God when the rapture occurs, the tribulation period will be a seven year period on earth that you will go through. I want you to turn in your Bibles and let's begin to look at what it will look like in that time. Luke chapter Number 17, the Gospel of Luke. Let's look together this morning at chapter number 17. 
and verse 26. Luke 17 and verse 26. If you're there, say glory to God. If you're not there, say wait just a minute. Okay, praise God. Luke, 20, Luke 17 and verse 26. As it was. Everybody shout out, as it was. Shout it again, as it was. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be. Everybody shout out, so shall it be. Come on, say it one more time, so shall it be. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day. Everybody say, until the day. They did all this stuff. They lived life. They went to work. They made their living. They went out to dinner. They drank. They got married. Some of them got married a few times. Glory to God. They live in life until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, everybody say likewise. As it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they brought, they sold, they planted, they built. Look up here at me for just a moment. As it was in the days of Lot, the Bible says they worked, they planted, they harvested their crops, they ate, they built homes, they built buildings. They were living everyday life. They gave, they sold, they planted, they built. But verse 29 says, but the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, everybody say the same day. The same day, this ain't a mid-trib rapture, this ain't a post-trib. The same day when the church was raptured out, when Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed some of them. No, it says destroyed them all, your Bible says. Now look up here at me. There's two things that Jesus said here in this passage. Number one, he said, as it was in the day of Noah. And number two, as it was in the day of Lot, or I'm going to say it this way, as it was in the day of Sodom and Gomorrah. Two events, as it was in the day of Noah, and as it was in the day of Sodom and Gomorrah. Two different events. Listen to me this morning. For 120 years, Noah warned of judgment coming and no one listened. For 120 years, Noah preached the judgment of God is coming. For 120 years, Noah sounded the alarm. You better get ready. You better get right. You better get ready for what's coming. Judgment is coming. For 120 years, what he preached was not popular. He told them that God is about to judge them and no one wanted to hear it. I can tell you just as Jesus read letter said as it was in the day of Noah so it'll be in these days before the coming of the son of man friend it's the same way today it's not popular to stand in pulpits and preach judgment is coming it's not popular to stand on the streets of New Orleans like your parents did calling a couple days ago on Bourbon Street when people are going in and out of strip clubs they're buying marijuana on every corner they're filling their drinks up over and over again they're dressing, my Lord, they're dressing like they... Well, let's just move on with that. I'm telling you, it's not popular to stand in the middle of a street and hold a cross that's painted red for the blood of Jesus Christ and warn people that Jesus Christ is coming again and you better get right or you're going to get left. People will spit on you. People will hate you. I'm telling you where our location is and where our church is, there's a million ways we could grow this thing, but I believe the only way to grow the church, the true church. Of Jesus Christ is to preach the uncompromised word of God and the message that the world needs to hear today is the same message that Noah sounded before he closed that ark door and that is judgment is coming. You better get right or you're going to get left. God took Noah and his family into that ark and hid them in a place of safety and then judgment came. Everybody's saying then judgment came. 
It came upon the earth and everyone not on the ark was killed. The Bible says all of them, all of them, everyone not on that ark, as I said a couple weeks ago, it didn't matter how good they could swim, didn't matter how much they tried to climb up the side of that ark, the door was closed. God saved Noah, a righteous man, and his family, but did not spare the rest of the world who did not make their way into the ark. Secondly, he says, as it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, they were carrying on with their normal day activities. They were warned that judgment was coming, but they did not heed the warning. An angel came down, and an angel took Lot and his family and removed them from the city of Sodom and removed the righteous. And when that happened, the Bible says, immediately fire fell down, brim stone, sulfur, raining fire falls from the sky and begins to consume all of the enemies of God in those two very wicked cities. He says, as it was in those days, so it'll be in the days before the coming of the Son of Man. Can I tell you today that Sodom and Gomorrah was a homosexual filled city. It was a place where people were wicked, evil, anti-God, atheists, wanted nothing to do with God, but God sent judgment. Can Can I tell the United States of America today something? Can I tell the wicked something today? If God doesn't judge America, he will have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. If God doesn't send judgment on America in this world today, he will have to apologize for those he judged previously. But the news is there is a tribulation period coming where this earth will endure seven years of judgment. Are you here today? There are people who believe the rapture will take place in the middle or the end of the tribulation, but I've got news for them today. The church is going to be airborne before judgment falls. The church is going to be out of here before the wrath of God falls. The church is going to be in the sky singing glory, hallelujah, before the wrath of God is poured out. God is going to take His people to a place of safety and the unbelievers, just like in the days of Noah and the days of Lot, they will be left on this earth to endure or to go through the tribulation. So here you are, you've missed the rapture. You were a lukewarm Christian and you missed it. You were a hypocrite and you missed it. You knew how to praise God in church but you treated everybody like you know what out there and you missed it. You didn't forgive people, so God couldn't forgive you, and you missed it. I'm preaching better than y'all are helping me, but I think I'll just keep on preaching, glory to God. You had a secret sin life that nobody knew about but you and God, and you missed it. Hello, friend. Hello, sir. You were on the internet doing things you shouldn't be doing, thinking you'd get away with it because no one was seeing you at 3 o'clock in the morning behind closed doors, and you miss the rapture. Listen to me, lukewarm church. Listen to me, cold Christian who doesn't long for his appearing. He's coming back for those who long for his appearing. You're not longing for his appearing. You missed it. I'm telling you, I've heard people say, I've heard young people say, well, I really want to go to heaven, but I hope the rapture doesn't take place till I get older because I want to live my life. Well, If it does take place, you're going to miss it because you're not longing for His appearing. You're more in love with this life and this world than you are in what Christ has for you in heaven. You want to get married and get a career and make money and then He can come back. You don't have your priorities straight, sir. Friend, ma'am, listen to me. You missed the rapture. Now, y'all may think this shouldn't be preached this morning before the rapture, but I pray to God somebody logs on to tagchurch.net or gets a hold of this CD and listens to it if they do miss the rapture because people are going to miss the rapture. People are going to miss the rapture. You've missed it. The question is, you are now on planet earth. What do you do now? Number one, if you miss the rapture, do not panic. Somebody say amen. Amen. If you wake up to find your loved ones are gone, when the breathtaking news that millions have vanished reaches the streets, I'm telling you, there is going to be panic. When Washington, D.C. tries to fix this problem, there's going to be panic. There's going to be panic 
When, listen to me, when roadways are blocked from piling cars because of people mysteriously missing, there will be panic. When airplanes begin falling from the skies, there will be panic. When babies are missing and kids are missing from the schools, there will be panic. There will be shock. There will be riots after the rapture. People will have strokes. People will have heart attacks because of, because of what they see is happening. The Bible says many of men's hearts will begin to fail them Jesus said in red letter Luke 21 verse 25 and 26 that there will be signs in the sun the moon and the star and on the earth nations will be in anguish and perplexity listen to this and the Bible says people will faint from terror apprehensive of what is coming into the world I'm telling you today if you miss the rapture if you're a mid-trib post-trib don't plan on going up in the pre-trib and you miss it do not panic glory to God panic's going to break loose like crazy you think there's things you think there's breaking news now going on in our cities and in our streets and you think it's panic and crazy people blocking roadways now oh my lands what is this world going to look like moment after the rapture of the church if you miss the rapture do not panic number two if you miss the rapture it is important that you realize that you are now living in a period called the great tribulation as I said earlier this is a period that will start seven years listen to me it's a period of seven years that will start at the rapture of the church and it will conclude at the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ the moment the trumpet sounds and the church is raptured tribulation begins that period concludes when he comes back for the battle of Armageddon seven years later it is a period that we call the tribulation and people ask about this tribulation they say well can people be saved during the tribulation can people that miss the rapture be able to get right with God and get saved and still go to heaven the answer to that question is absolutely yes you can I'm going to repeat it yes Yes, you can. You can get saved. The Bible says so in Revelation chapter number 7 and verses 9 through 14. If you want to look there with me, the Word of God says, And after this I beheld, and lo, there was a great multitude. Many people he saw, which no man could number. They were of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues. And they stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands and they cried with a loud voice saying salvation to our God which sits upon the throne and unto the Lamb and all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and they fell before the throne on their faces and they worship God saying amen blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever amen now listen to this one of the elders answered saying unto me what are these which are arrayed in white robes and whence came they let me take it out of King Jim language and put it into our everyday language the angel looked at him and said who in the world are these people in white robes and where in the world did they come from how did they get here before the throne and John answered him saying sir you know that was a reverent regard but definitely not worship only you know sir only you know Mr. Angel and he responded to John he said to him these are they which came out of the great tribulation and they have washed their robes and they were made white by the blood of the Lamb of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He said, I saw around the throne a multitude that no man can number. And he said that group of people that no man can number was clothed in white. And the angel said, who are they? And John said, only you know. And the angel said, these are they which got saved in the tribulation. They are the ones that moments after the breaking news, they fell on their faces. They said, God, I missed the rapture, but I'm not going to miss heaven. God, I played, I played games. I played games with you while on this earth. I'm not playing games anymore. I'm surrendering all. I give it all to you, God. I'm not going to miss heaven. Whew. Whew. 
There'll be, listen to me, there'll be 144,000 Jews, 144,000 witnesses, 144,000 evangelists that the book of Revelation says will begin to evangelize the world during the great tribulation. God will anoint 144,000 witnesses to go and even in the midst of the Antichrist, even in the midst of judgment, there will be 144,000 witnesses sounding the alarm, preaching the gospel. I'm going to tell you, I won't be here to preach the gospel during the tribulation. If it takes place this week, I'm not preaching next Sunday. Amen. You don't even have to write me a check anymore. I'm done. I'm out. I'm off. Amen. It's over. I'm not preaching. I'm not sticking around to preach. God's got a group to do that. Billy Graham's not sticking around to preach during the tribulation. Churches aren't going to have their pastors. Most of them aren't going to have their pastors holding weekly services. Glory to God. Franklin Graham won't be here to hold rallies out at the Capitol steps to help you get right with God. If you miss the rapture, we're going to be gone. Jimmy Swaggart, he's preaching the cross today on SBN. One of the only few on TV actually preaching the blood of Jesus. Maybe because he had to go through a moral failure and find out that he needed the blood of Jesus. Even being a worldwide evangelist, we all need the saving grace of God. But I'm going to tell you, as powerful as SBN is and as many people as it's reaching, Jimmy Swaggart's not going to stick around through the tribulation to keep preaching the message of the cross. But there will be anointed preachers. There will be 144,000 witnesses and there will be two powerful witnesses that will stand and declare the glory of God and many people will be saved during the tribulation and I think we ought to give God praise for that today so if you miss the rapture the first thing you need to do is you need to say the sinner's prayer you need to call upon the Lord you need to repent today number three number three if you miss the rapture you need to gather up all the Bibles that you can find and gather them up as quickly as you can. I'm going to say it again. If you miss the rapture, you better gather up all of the Bibles that you can find. Gather them up as quickly as you can because soon they will be confiscated. Shortly after the Antichrist government is in control, there will be laws in place that it will become treason for you to be caught with a Bible in your hands. It will be against the law to own one of these. They will be burned. They will be shredded. They will be consumed. They will be done away with. You need to get as many of them as you can. But it isn't about the amount of the Bibles. You need to get the Bibles and you need to start reading that Bible. You need to read it and then you need to reread it. Is anybody in this place today? You need to read the Word of God like you've never read the Word of God before. You, you, because listen, evidently you weren't reading it like you should have been before the rapture of the church. If you had, you wouldn't be where you are now at missing the rapture and in the tribulation. You need to read it and reread it. You need to read it until you get it memorized. You need to read it until you can quote it because even the ones you are able to get your hands on will mold more than likely be taken from you and you need to get it and you need to get it in you not because there's going to be a test when you stand before God I told you one person one person told me they said all I ever see is older people riding, reading their Bibles why don't younger people I said because the older people are getting ready for their final exam before they stand before the Lord of course we know that's not true you need to read this Bible because you're going to need it as a weapon against the enemy if you can't live for God today before the rapture how in the world do you think you'll live for God without the word of God after the rapture and in the tribulation you're going to need it you're going to need to be able to quote it to stand up against the demonic forces that are coming to destroy you you're going to need the word of God in you that when they get ready to chop your head off from your body you're going to need enough word in you that will allow you to go through something like that with a smile on your face and praises on your lips glory to God you're going to need enough Bible in you that it doesn't matter how the deception of the enemy comes comes to try to get you to renounce Christ, there's going to be enough word in you that you're going to be able to stand upon the B-I-B-L-E. Because yes, that is the book for me. Glory to God. You're going to need the Bible in you, friend, because it's the sword of the Spirit. It'll be your only weapon against the powers of hell. It'll be the only strength you'll have to stand upon. It'll be the only truth that the world will know in that day and time. 
Glory to God. I'm telling you, church, if we ever need to get back to the Word, it's today. If we ever need to get in the Word, it's today. Don't wait and miss the rapture and then start devouring it. Hello now. Come on, Christians, listen to me today. We better get back to the Word now. We better get back to preaching the Word now in our pulpits. We better get back to living the Word in our homes. We better get back to studying the Word in our, in our, in our discipleships and in our classes. I'll tell you, we better get, we better, listen parents, you better pour that Word into your kids. Pour that Word into your kids. Don't, don't just rely on the church to do it. That's like taking your kids to public schools and expecting your teachers to teach them everything. You're the parent. It's your responsibility. Open the Word of God. Read the Word of God. Teach your children the Word of God. God. Teach your grandchildren the Word of God. I believe in these last days grandparents ought to drive across the city and pick up their grandkids. If your children aren't living for God and coming to church, grandma, grandpa, I don't care if you have to drive 30 miles and go get them. You go get them and get them in the house of God. I be- I'm thankful for people who went and picked me up when I was a little kid. Who drove across town to get me and get me in the house of God where I could learn the Word of God. we got to get the Word of God back into our lives. Somebody praise God today. Woo. Number four, if you miss the rapture, you need to set a plan for survival now. Listen to me. If you miss the rapture, you better get a plan to survive. And for those of you in this place who don't plan on going in the pre-trib, I hope you have a survival plan for your family. If you're here today and you're not living right, You're not ready for the rapture. If you're here today and you don't have a plan to go up in that pre-trib rapture that we preached about a couple weeks ago, you better get ready to survive, can you say amen? If you don't want to serve God now, then you better at least store up some food, store up some water, because soon you'll not be able to get it. Anybody here today? This isn't TV. I'm really standing here. (laughs) I'm like really here. (laughs) Glory to God. I'm breathing the same air out of the same room you are today. Hallelujah. (laughs) You better have a plan to get some food and some water if you're not going in the rapture. Then you better cover that food and water because the nuclear pollution will more than likely contaminate the water because... There will be nuclear war in the tribulation. Read the book of Revelation. You better have a way to get solar energy. If you're not planning on going in the rapture, I'd be working on that now. You better get flashlights. You better have kerosene and lanterns. You better have a way of solar energy to keep your family warm in the winter Because natural gas and energy will not be available to you during the tribulation. More than likely, moments after the vanishing of people, things are going to begin to shut down really, really quick. People that once kept those things running may be singing praises in heaven. Things that used to stand have now been crushed and broken by things that destroyed it in the, in the rapture of the church. You better have a way to keep your family warm. I would say to you, if you miss the rapture, you better get out of the city and get out in the country. Because the Antichrist will go to the cities first. Because the cities are where the masses of people are. and He'll go to the cities, the populated areas. So you better get out in the country and you better have some survival techniques. The young generation doesn't have a clue about surviving. Do they, brother and sister Span? Don't have a clue about it. Don't even know how to, what, what, you, what, what's a, what do you do with a garden? <laughs> There's some in the younger generation don't even know how to cook, much less raise the food. You better know how to survive if you're planning on living during the tribulation. You better learn to live off the land. You better know how to pick up an axe and cut wood. You better know how to start a fire the old-fashioned way. (laughs) You better know how to grow a garden and can vegetables. Right, Sister Pat? Can and vegetables. Some some of our golden agers, they know some of this stuff. 
You better know how to hunt. You better know how to fish. Listen to me today, church. You better, you better get a gun. <laughs> Thought I'd get a few amens in Arkansas saying that. <laughs> Lifetime member of the National Rifle Association. So let me say it again. Maybe I'll get a few more amens saying it this way. You better get a lot of guns. I'm going to say it again. You better get a lot of guns. You better get a lot of guns. People wanting to take guns away. You ain't taking mine. And if you're going to go through the tribulation, you better have a gun and you better have a lot of ammo. You better get some first aid supplies because there'll be no hospitals. There'll be no doctors. Medicine will be hard to get. You better not trust anyone that comes knocking on your door. Because people will kill you for a slice of bread. Life will lose its meaning in the tribulation period. You better know how to survive. Number five, if you miss the rapture, you need to be on the lookout for a man named Antichrist. If you miss the rapture, you need to be on the lookout for a man named Antichrist. If you're going to survive during the tribulation and your soul is going to be saved, here's the one that you're going to have to deal with. Let me say that again. If you get saved after the rapture, and you're going to live through the tribulation and you're going to make it to heaven. You're going to live for God and never renounce Jesus all the way to the very end. Here's the man named Antichrist that you're going to have to deal with. There will be a one world religion of the Antichrist that will worship in large cathedrals and large sanctuaries. Don't join that church. The church that is big and beautiful during the tribulation is not the right church. Okay. Hopefully somebody will get the CD of this that misses the rapture. Don't join that church. Church, that is the false church of the Antichrist, which, by the way, you ought to be coming on Wednesday nights to learn all this stuff. We're getting into all that here in the next few weeks on Wednesday nights teaching the book of Revelation. But don't join that church because the true church of Jesus Christ will not be worshiping in cathedrals during the tribulation. This place right here will be shut down. We won't be worshiping in this nice, beautiful, air-conditioned sanctuary. The true church of Jesus Christ will hide out in caves and they will find anywhere they can get underground. You will be on the outside and they will be on the inside. The inside government church. Let me tell you a little bit about this. This man named Antichrist. You need to watch out for a world leader. He will rise up with hope for the world. He will rise up with a hope for the world that just moments has experienced the breaking news of millions vanishing from around the world. He will rise up with a message. He will rise up with hope. He will rise up and he will have a voice. And in the first year or two of the tribulation, he will look good. He will sound good. Many will probably call him Mr. One. Wonderful because he will bring answers, he will bring solutions to the problems, he will not be called the Antichrist, he will be Mr. Wonderful, but you will know soon that he is the Antichrist because he will dominate the airwaves. I gotta go through this quickly. He will be a military genius protecting all the nations of the world, he will control the economy, he will institute a number. The Bible says it's the number of man, that number is 666, that without it, you will be unable to buy or sell. His word, his message, just like our politicians today have a message, they have a, they have a slogan, they have a word, the message, the word of the Antichrist will be peace. He will offer peace to the world. Can I tell you today, the world is ready for peace more than it's ever been. I fully disagree with President Obama who this past week said our nation's in more peaceful state than it's been in years. I disagree with that. What planet are you living on, Barack Obama? Obama, this ain't a peaceful nation. My Lord, get your hand, head out of the sand. Wake up and realize what's going on. America needs peace now. Yeah, America needs peace. 
But the peace America needs is not the peace that the Antichrist can bring. It will be a false peace, a falsely peace. It will be a fake peace. It will be a deceptive peace. you got to watch out for this man named Antichrist because it will be a peace that will deceive millions more into the kingdom of darkness. There will never be peace on this planet until the Prince of Peace steps on the Mount of Zion and splits it. Glory to God, the Prince of Peace. Woo! The Word of God says this man named Antichrist will be physical, physically appealing. He will be highly intelligent. He will be a man who will have a Christ-like charisma, if you will. He will make treaty with the Jews. He will overcome, he will overcome, listen, he will overcome resistance from the European Confederacy. He will be attacked by the kings of the south. He will receive a deadly head wound to his head, but it will be healed up after he has been mortally wounded. He will become the leader of the world, a world ruler. He will break the Jewish treaty that he had previously signed. He will kill the two witnesses, but they will rise again by the Spirit of God. He demands divine worship. He will persecute the Jews. He will kill the 144,000 evangelists that we spoke about in just a moment ago. He will destroy the world church, but ultimately he will be defeated at the battle of Armageddon, and he will be cast into the lake of fire where he will be tormented forever and ever and ever. But before he gets there, he will lead the greatest deception that the world has ever known during that tribulation period. I'm here to tell you today, beware of the man called Antichrist And do not listen to what he says. And if you're living during the Antichrist days, watch out. If you're living during the tribulation, watch out because he's going to have a companion. And his companion's name is the false prophet. You have two here you got to deal with. Satan always, always, always tries to masquerade and tries to take what God has, the Trinity. And do it himself. Satan, the Antichrist, the false prophet. The Bible says in Revelation 13, i got to move quickly, about this false prophet, that he will have great power. The false prophet's job will be to cause the entire world to worship the Antichrist. Your Bible says the false prophet will make fire come down from heaven. He will deceive by miracles, which will cause the earth, which which the earth will worship this beast that the false prophet sets up. He will make an image of the Antichrist. And these miracles will bring deception that truly this is the Savior. Truly this is the one. Truly this is God. And he'll cause the earth to make an image to the Antichrist. The false false prophet will give life to that beast. He will give life to that beast. And he'll cause that image created to have the ability to even speak, your Bible says. He will force everyone who refuses to worship the beast to be killed. This image that he brings to life and causes to speak. Anyone who doesn't worship the beast, the false prophet, will force to be killed. He forces all who, to rece- all who receive the mark of the beast either on their forehead or their right hand. This mark of that beast, of that image, you are required to have a mark. The Bible says without that mark you cannot buy or sell. There's been different things for the mark over time. Some of you remember when the barcode came out, everybody thought that was the mark of the beast. People thought Visa was the mark of the beast. Now everybody's... Everybody's thinking the little chips in the hand is going to be the mark of the beast. No, it doesn't say in, it says on, okay? Understand the difference. All the same people that think it's the mark of the beast go and get a chip in their pets. I don't get that. Just, just give your pet to the Antichrist like that. How, how dare you do that? Been a lot of things blamed for the mark of the beast, just like there's been a lot of people blamed for the Antichrist. Everybody thought Obama was the Antichrist. <laughs> now people think Trump's the Antichrist. 
Hillary Clinton could be the Antichrist. See, I mean, no, we all, <laughs> it's true though. It doesn't matter. I bet 60 years ago, whoever was, uh, see, that's how young I am, see, because that was way before my time. I believe they probably thought JFK was the Antichrist. Who knows? Anything that comes around is the next thing. Everybody thought Obama was the Antichrist. I said, no, nah, maybe the false prophet, but doubtful the Antichrist. This false prophet will require the mark of the beast. 666, it's the number of man. It will be how the economy of the world will function. The dollar will lose its value immediately after the rapture. Every means of currency around the world will mean nothing immediately after the rapture. The Antichrist, the false prophet, will have a solution. Just like everybody running for president has a solution to strengthen the economy. In this strengthening of the economy, there will be a one world economy. Without the mark of the beast, you'll not be able to buy or sell. Listen to me today. If you miss the rapture, don't take the mark. Do not take the mark of the beast if you miss the rapture. People say all the time, well, if I miss the rapture, I'll just go through the tribulation and I'll just give my head. <laughs> Even though I couldn't live for God when believers were here on this earth and churches were open all the time, somehow I'll be strong enough to live for God during the tribulation. I hope so. You're left behind. The church is gone. And the world is about to go mad. Demonized spirits have just been released from pits that they've been held in, in re, been reserved for this period of time. So what your Bible teaches. They're demonic spirits locked up in pits that will be loose during the tribulation period. They'll be locusts. They'll be the size of dinosaurs that will come and devour and sting. You will be in the minority and the masses of people will be following the Antichrist. And if you take the mark, you will be eternally doomed forever. There's no going back. You lose your soul. How many of you know this will be some good preaching on VTN and television and TBN? I mean, I'm not because I'm preaching. I'm saying the, the message. The message. You'll lose your soul. Eternally doomed. Damned. If you accept Christ and you refuse the mark of the beast, because you're a follower of Christ, you're not going to worship that beast, therefore you're not taking the mark of the beast, you will not be able to buy or sell because that system will be controlled by the Antichrist. So when you go in to get some antibiotics for your sick child or your sick self, and they ask you for the mark, and you say, I don't have the mark. I'm sorry, we cannot help you, but you can go here to get the mark. When you're starving, and all you would like is a piece of bread to satisfy the hunger, and they say, we're sorry. It's all controlled by the Antichrist. You see, look at it this way. If you accept Christ and refuse to worship the beast, you'll most likely be put into prison, tortured, and ultimately your head is going to be chopped off of your body. It's quiet in here. Because Satan and the power of darkness have one agenda during the tribulation, and that is to build an army of darkness and do everything in their power to keep you from following Christ. You want to live right for God now? You better read the Fox's Book of Martyrs. Ever read that? You better find out what haters of God do to lovers of God. Take a moment, look at history and see what haters of God do to lovers of God. You better know how they've dismembered bodies of Christians. 
how they've thrown Christians off buildings, how they've dragged Christians behind chariots, how they've got, gouged out the eyes of Christians, how they've burnt them alive. Hebrews 11 says how they sawed them in two, sawed their bodies in half, pulling their bodies apart, throwing them into dens of lions. Christians have been stoned to death. They've been killed by the sword. And the list goes on and on and on. That's what will happen to Christians during the tribulation. Will you announce Christ when they rip the arms off of your newborn child? I know that didn't sound pretty. It's not three points in a poem preached in 20 minutes or less. You know what somebody told me just the other day on vacation on the cruise boat? I, actually, it wasn't on the boat. It was on the island. I was swimming in a pool at a resort with Haven and Macy. I think Crystal and Alonda were snorkeling or something at that time. And they was out there with the stuff, you know. I was in the pool. And, um, and I swam by this, I don't know, it was probably five or six people there. And their conversation caught my attention. They were talking about tithing. I heard tithing, and I thought, so I just kind of swam a little closer. And, of course, Mace, <laughs> you know, I <laughs> just want to hear this, you know. I'm never going to see them again. They're never going to see me again. Which, by the way, guess who was on the cruise with us? Ryan and Danica Martin. <laughs> and uh, uh, the pastors at Cersei First Assembly of God were on there. So we had like a preacher's convention. But um, anyhow, I just got a little closer and. It didn't take me too long to find out that this group of people, there was one guy that was anti-church. He thinks you can go to church at home, you don't need the church, church is just, they pay preachers too much, all that stuff, okay? The rest of the crowd, you could tell they were from a very large, seeker-sensitive church, which are like my favorite kind of people when I get around them, because <laughs> I don't keep quiet too long. So they're going on and on and on, and here's what they do. I'm listening. They're talking about tithing. They're talking about small groups. Sunday nights don't work. They're talking about all this stuff. It's just five, four or five people against this one man. They're going back and forth. And I'm just swimming close. And every time they look at me, I just look away. Like, <laughs> It was so bad, their conversation. I almost one po- at one point, I almost wanted to lie. Instead of telling them I was a preacher, I wanted to say, I'm a sinner. And I don't want anything to do with y'all's God. Because the way y'all just discuss God in church, I don't want it. I wanted to say that. That'd be a lie. So I didn't. So I was quiet. I was good. Halfway minded my own business until. <laughs> until one guy, he says, not the, not the anti-church guy, the seeker sensitive mega church guy. He says this. He says, yeah, in our church, our sermons are 20 minutes or less. So I was good with the tithing. I was good with the small groups, the no Sunday nights. I was even okay with pastors not getting paid a lot. You know, I didn't need to say anything about that. But then he said our sermons have to be under 20 minutes, and he was all for that. And I'm listening, I'm thinking, well, whoopee-doo, you know. No wonder it's a mega church. They made that clear several times to the guy that sits at home by himself in church that we're a mega church. We run thousands. You're one by yourself. You can't do nothing by yourself. Look what we can do. We go all over the world. We... And he's all like, well, y'all take all your money and pay your preachers a lot of money, and that money should be to help the poor. Okay. They said 20 minutes, and I thought, okay, whoopee-doo. Then they said this. They said, but the reason, the reason for that is because people... People's attention span. It's been proven that, and they, they start giving all these facts that after 20 minutes, you know, you lose people's attention and, you know, they're going through all this. Well, that was it. I had to step in. So here's how I stepped in. I just swam a little closer. I said, hey, guys, I hate to interrupt. <laughs> Have y'all, and I just really acted like I hadn't heard a thing. I said, have y'all watched any cool movies lately? Like at the movie theater? Any good movies? I mean, because I, like on the cruise, they show movies at night on the big screen. They had like Star Wars that night before. And I'm like, you know, did y'all watch Star Wars? Y'all, y'all, any good movies out? I get them talking about movies. 
And then I start asking them what sports they like. Oh, come to find out they're huge football fans and they're this and they're that. And, you know, oh, we're, you know, the, this one group was, was from Alabama and they go to at least three Alabama games a year and they're going on and on. I said, do you guys get up and leave the movie 20 minutes after it starts? I did. And I said, even if your team is 30 behind in the first quarter, do you leave after the first quarter because it's lost your attention? Well, then they knew I'd been listening. <laughs> they knew I'd been listening. I got them then. <laughs> then I swam away. Gave my two cents and then I swam away into the pool. People sitting in a swimming pool talking about 20 minutes max of the word they can take. But sit through R-rated movies for two hours and not bother them. Sit through football games that's nothing more than worldly idol worship. And complain they can't hear the word of God for more than 20 minutes. And you think you're going to stand there when they're getting ready to dismember your baby? They're getting ready to chop the limbs off your child that was born two years into the tribulation period. And you're going to be able to stand for Christ then? Will you renounce Christ when they threaten to shove your wife into a pit of fire? Will you renounce Christ when your daughter cries out, Daddy, I'm hungry. Daddy, I'm starving. Don't renounce Christ. Don't renounce Christ because your last breath on this earth will be your first breath in heaven. In one blink, you'll go from seeing torture to seeing Jesus. Can I tell you something, Madeline, if you'll come, please? Can I tell you something today, church? No man knows the day or the hour. I don't know if he's coming back today. Or if the rapture isn't for another 20 years, I don't know. I do know this, that if he continues to prolong his coming, if he tarries much longer, we're going to go through some of the stuff I talked about. You don't have to be in the tribulation to go through it. Read the Fox's Book of Martyrs. Read, the, read Hebrews 11. Christians have been going through this stuff Since the very beginning. We've lived chilled out here in America with freedom. Thank God for it. But it's coming. You see it. It's changing. If you don't see it changing like our president doesn't see it, he's deceived. There's a spirit of deception all over that man. It needs to be broken. Hope it is. You see it. You know it's changing. You know it's changing in America. And if he came today, the word declares even so, come quickly. That's my prayer. Come. I want to be ready. I want to go. Pastor, do you want to escape all of that? You better believe I do. But at the same time, I'm willing to endure to the end if I have to go through it. Before he does come. I'm willing. Are you willing? Are you willing to go through. What it costs. To be a follower of Christ. Even if it costs you your life. In Acts chapter 7. Stephen a deacon in the church. 
was being stoned to death for his faith in Christ. And probably one of my most favorite passages in the Bible says that when he was being stoned, that Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, that lamp had oil in it, didn't it? Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the anointing. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Thank God for the river of life. Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, Acts 7 says, he looked up and he saw heaven opened. (laughs) Heaven was opened, ready to receive him. The Bible says he looked up and he saw the glory of God as he was being stoned. And he saw Jesus, it says, standing at the right hand of God. And he says, as stones are being tossed his way, and he looks up full of the Holy Spirit, he says, look, I see him. I see him. I see heaven open and I see the Son of God standing at the right hand of the Father. I told you, your last breath on this earth will be your first in heaven. In one blink, you'll go from seeing torture to seeing Jesus. closing this morning with this and then we're going to pray I've shared this before it's been quite some time had a dream one night while in Eureka Springs, Arkansas Crystal Nine Haven and Macy had went and seen the great passion play we were in a hotel that night and I woke up with a dream that really just I woke up shaking and weeping, feeling emotions and and feelings that I have never in my life felt like I did that night, before or since. It was so strong on me and the dream was so real to me, I felt like the Lord spoke to me and said, record it, take your phone, video it, speak into your phone. Speak the dream. So I quietly, 3, 3.30 in the morning, slipped out of the hotel room, went down to the lobby, weeping and shaking under the power of God. I took my phone and I held it out and I hit record. And I recorded a video that describes a dream of me and Haven standing in a camp of people, hundreds of people, thousands probably, but definitely in the hundreds. Large tents everywhere out in this field. People were just pushed in together. We were standing in a line and there was commotion and people, and, but this line was long, a long line of people. And I kept wondering, what are we in line for and where are we at? And Haven was just talking to me like it was any normal day, just standing there with me. At this time, she was probably eight years old. It's been about three years since the dream. I remember as we would pass tents through the line, I started to see on the tents FEMA camp. FEMA, Federal Emergency. And I was seeing FEMA, and of course God revealed to me later that our federal government will... Be a part of all of this end time stuff. I almost felt safe when I first saw the FEMA because I thought, I'm in a, there must have been a disaster, something, and they they got the survivors here. I I almost felt safe and knew Crystal and Macy wasn't there, but felt like maybe Haven and I had survived something. I, I was wrong because the line was actually taking me to my death. As we got closer and closer, I began to realize what was happening at the end of that line. 
people were being beheaded if they did not renounce the Lord Jesus Christ. All they had to do was say no to Christ and yes to the world. One sentence and you could go on. I could hear the screams and the cries and I saw many people renounce Christ and go on and get assembled into tents and it was almost like there was rejoicing in the tents because they were alive. They survived the torture at the end of the line. As we got closer and closer, I knew in my heart that I was not going to renounce Jesus Christ. I got down on my knees and I looked at Haven face to face and I said, Haven, do you know what we're about to face up here? She said, yeah, Dad. We've talked about this for years now. I said, no, honey. This is reality. I said, do you realize what we're about to have to endure for Jesus Christ? She said, yeah. They're going to kill us. In the dream, she said, they're probably going to kill me first so that you'll renounce him. But, Dad, I'm not going to renounce Christ. And you better not either. Because this is going to be over in a few minutes. And we're going to be together in heaven. That's what she told me. There's a part of me that felt, I cannot do this to my child. But there was another part of me that knew was the only thing to do. Christ first. Always. We got to the end of that line. And they said, sir, we'll take her first unless you renounce Christ. And she looked up at me and she said, Daddy, it's going to be okay. I'll see you soon. And I had to let her go. And the dream ended. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm preaching about this morning is real stuff. This isn't a fairy tale. This isn't something I read out of a sci-fi magazine. What I'm talking about today, people have already gone through it. And everyone is about to go through it. Unless the coming of the Lord spares us from it, that's where we're headed. And those who miss the rapture will definitely go through it. All over this place, will you stand quietly and bow your heads? Nobody moving around. With heads bowed and eyes closed, if you're here today, and you would say, Pastor Dwayne, I want to live for God. Teenager, if your parents don't serve God, you better serve God. Single lady, if your boyfriend doesn't want to serve God, break up with them and you serve God and walk pure and walk holy. Sir, it's time to get right with God and be the man of God. Be the spiritual leader in your home. Lead your family to, to the cross Lead them to heaven. Take them with you. Don't be left behind. If everyone around you isn't serving God, you better serve God. If you would say, Pastor, I'm here today and I'm not serving God like I need to be serving God. I'm not right with God. But today I want to make all things new. Today I want to give my heart to God afresh and anew today. I'm walking away from this world and I'm going to live for God. I'm selling out. Pastor, I'm selling out today. I don't want, I'm not interested this morning, church, in somebody that wants to say a little prayer or sign a little card. I'm looking for somebody today that says, Pastor, I'm ready to sell out. I've not been living a sold out life for Christ. And I'm afraid the life I've been living will be one that will be left behind when the rapture takes place. I'm not willing for that to happen. I don't want that to happen. I'm ready to live for God. I'm ready to sell out to God. See, anybody can walk down and repeat a little prayer. Anybody can sign a little 
a little membership card. It takes, it takes a born again believer to go out into this world and live for God in the face of everything that we're up against today. It takes someone sold out, someone that has completely given their heart to Jesus Christ and you would say, that's me today. I need to give my heart to God. I need to give my heart to Christ all over this place right now. If that's you, put your hand up high and keep it up there. Put it up high. Yes. Keep it up there today. Come on. Keep it up. Keep it up today. Who else this morning? That's me. Thank you. Who else today? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Come on. Put your hand up. I'm not serving God the way I need to be serving God. I'm not living for God the way I need to be living. Sir, if your friends don't want to be your friends anymore because you won't laugh at their dirty jokes or go to the bar with them, that's okay. You serve God. Young lady, if you have to walk alone to stay pure, you walk alone and you serve God. Mom and dad, if your family forsakes you and takes away your inheritance, it's okay. You serve God.